Here we are in the library at Ballura, and there are hundreds of books. And they reflect the taste of John Tallis, the last owner. And they reveal things about his interest in art and architecture and culture. But there was one book that he couldn't fit into his shelves. And it's a most remarkable volume indeed. We asked the Ages newspaper political cartoonist and printmaker Jim Pavlidis to join our archivist manager Ingrid Hoffman to help unravel its mysteries. William Hogarth was an 18th century artist, printmaker and satirist. And we have a complete collection of 150 steel engravings of his works collected together in a volume from the early 19th century. It all starts with Hogarth, really, mm -hmm. that whole satirical... Uh, and it's, there's a beautiful irony that um, you know, a lot of the people he was sending up, perhaps, you know, a strata of society were the ones who collected his work, so... You know, that's a, <laughs> Indeed. It's quite surreal, isn't it? Mm. Some of the principal inhabitants of your moon, <laughs> he says. Um, and look at this. So he's in a way lampooning the latest uh, technology yeah. discovered by telescope, bought by your greatest perfection since the last eclipse. So there's something quite, um, well, lampooning about his his text let alone showing the inhabitants of the moon who look like Salvador Dali in a way. So, I mean the beauty of um, I guess a lot of his work is to show that the while a lot of gadgets and gizmos might have changed the human condition still is pretty similar I mean fundamentally people are no different than they were a few hundred years ago a couple hundred years ago so you know the idea of Elon Musk and and his, uh, his like of wanting to go and populate Mars, well, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> there's parallels today. <laughs> Quite. But, um, Hogarth grew up in Smithfield in a busy, um, chaotic part of London, particularly during the annual fair, the Bartholomew Fair, where there were early merry-go-rounds and there were there was the bearded, bearded lady and there were um, you know horror shows and they might look savage some of them but in fact there's a, there's a there's humanity that's beneath them so the much image. so and um, his Hogarth's concern with um, the degradation of women for example mm. A Harlot's Tale, yeah. Jim Lane, he was horrified by alcoholism yeah. and the effect it had on women and their babies, so whole families ruined by the lottery, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. which was a South Sea Island bubble um, and, ex you know, one of the early pyramid schemes yeah. where people invested money in um, what was touted to be surefire high returns through yeah. slavery. Um, and colonial exploitation, and it blew up. Yeah. So his concerns were as current as. Uh, yeah. Well, you're yeah, ahead of his time. Too. There's a whole backstory about the rump, the parliamentarians who were left after a big purge yeah. in the British Parliament, and so these are the impotent ones. Uh, left as the committee and he's <laughs> sending up um, their sort of characterlessness and their sameness I suppose. <laughs> what do you notice? Because they're all individual and yet they're all sort of archetypes as well. That, that's, that's the thing. I mean that's in a way um, cartooning. I mean there's a, um, it's the familiar in, in which, um, which is captured. Uh, again, the just a technique, the expressions are fantastic. Mm. So beautiful and expressive. That, that's, the, that's the thing. It wasn't enough just to have that scene. Every face mm. is considered and different. You know, it's, um, there's like little byplays, you know, little conversations happening there. Um, there. You, know, you know what I mean? It's, um, yes. it's a lot of layers to it. I, I, I just see today, you know, that's, I just, <laughs> that's <laughs> you know, we can all think of enough examples of, of um, what happens every week in our own pub, all over the world, in a way that um, you look at that and think, well, 
The clothes are different, but really. Just that the delicacy just to not overplay that part there so that it doesn't read as black. That's black. That's sort of fifty percent black or sixty percent black. That's that's what the um that's where the skill is, you know. And he and he he did learn to do it himself. I mean, there was a lot of um, um, craftsmen then who who could do it, who could take images and uh, would do it for others. I know with botanical um, illustrators, for example, there were there were master um, engravers that would take the drawings and then convert them. But Hogarth did it himself. Engraving, you're just working straight into the metal itself. So there's very few artists today that I know of, and I mean Melbourne. Um, it's a very um, big printmaking community in Melbourne, but there's very few actually um, use uh, engraving these days. It's a bit of a specialised thing. Both the, the incredible techniques mm. as well as the sheer artistry and talent are a legacy for British art and Western art in general, really, because Hogarth established the first art school, the rights of artists yeah. he fought for, the gallery system, so fair representation for artists. Yeah. That's his legacy. Amazing. His. Yeah. I think um, there are universal truths and and. Um, Apart from my own work, you know, I work at the Age newspaper where, you know, um, some of the concerns, social concerns are similar to what I might do. Just, I just think the, um, the humanity on display in, um, in Hogarth's and you know, you can think of examples every week where any one of these images come to life, I think.